Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome to my house. I'm Martin Hand, and I miss seeing you all, all uh, at the Bailey Contemporary Arts Museum where we and the city of Pompano Beach and my friends, the musicians that worked with me, uh, did a presentation on the history of jazz. We can't do that because we're social distancing. However, I'm here at my house and I'm looking at all you guys out there in the virtual world and I'd like to say welcome. Today what we're gonna do is talk a little bit about the beginnings of jazz guitar and how it came about and what its function was in bands. So let's go back to 1908 and uh, take away electricity. So obviously we couldn't be doing this. Uh, the first instrument that was the rhythm instrument in your dance bands was not the guitar, it was the banjo. And I'm gonna grab a little banjo here. This is my, my guitar, you've probably seen me all play this and I'll play it for you in a little bit. But let me grab this other instrument here. <clears throat> this is a Maybell banjo made by the Slingerland Drum Company in about 19... Somewhere between 1910 and 1920, I'm not exactly sure. So this is a very old instrument. Uh, the banjo was used for rhythm in dance bands. And the reason it was used was because it was loud. And it cut through the trumpets and trombones and drums and everything else. So I'm gonna play a little bit of what you would hear the rhythm banjo doing in a big band. Okay, so the first piece that I played, you may have a familiar melody there. It's five foot two and eyes of blue, but I picked that because it's typical of the dance tempo that the banjo would be used for rhythm um, in the 1920s, uh, in New Orleans especially. And then the second piece was just a little slower foxtrot te tempo. Um, it was based on, do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? But the point I'm trying to make to you is the rhythm of the banjo and the sound of the instrument was so powerful that it could cut through trumpets, trombones, drums, tubas with no amplification. This little instrument is very loud and very obnoxious. But let's talk about the guitar. The banjo having only four strings was very limited in its uh, ability to play melodies or harmonies in a, in, a, in a wide range. The guitar having six strings, much wider range, but it wasn't very loud. This guitar here is what you would have seen in the 20s and 30s and 40s for a guitar. It has a thick body, F holes and an arch top. This gave it the projection that it needed for rhythm guitar. It still was not loud enough for the guitar to be used as a solo instrument, but it was used as rhythm and took the place of the banjo. Here's some of the rhythms you might have heard being played on the guitar. Freddie Green was a very famous guitar player, played with the Count Basie Orchestra from the 30s up to Count Basie's death in the 80s. And he was so famous for his rhythm guitar playing that people would say to me, if I was playing in an orchestra, they'd say, Martin, play Freddie Green. And I knew exactly what they meant. They meant this. What was 
the difference between what I played previously and what I just played? What I played previously, if you notice, I was playing bass notes and chords. Very full sounding. Freddie Green used the middle of the guitar, used only two or three notes, but he played a guitar where the strings were very high and very thick. And so they were very loud and they created a rhythmic sound which blended with the orchestra. Freddie once said, the guitar shouldn't be heard on its own, but when it's not there, you'll miss it. So in other words, it became part of the rhythm section, but not a solo instrument. The advent of the amplified guitar changed the function of the guitar completely. And for those of you who would like to hear examples, really good examples, there's a YouTube channel that you can go to. The name of the guitar player is Joe Negri. He's from Philadelphia, jazz guitar player, studio guitar player. And he has a history of jazz guitar, part one and part two, and it's fabulous. And he has some great clips of all the old jazz guitar players starting from the very first recording of the jazz guitar. Um, the guitar sound without amplification, just acoustically, with amplification. Now I can play single lines. as I want. I would cut through a big band or an, an orchestra and the guitar would be heard. So the development of this was very, very important to the function of the guitar and how that changed. Charlie Christian was one of the first guitar players to actually play with the Benny Goodman Orchestra and play solos. In other words, single line improvised solos, just the same as the clarinet would be playing. And he could only do this with the advent of pickups and amplifiers. And we'll go into that at another time. So I'm going to say goodbye to you here for now. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, having you in my home. And I hope you've enjoyed a little bit about the history of jazz guitar. Next time, we'll, have, uh, we'll delve into the electric guitar a little more. I'll also have some audio clips to play for you. Hopefully that'll come across well on this uh, in our grand experiment here. So in the meantime, stay safe, social distance, wash your hands, don't touch your face, and I'll try and do the same. I miss you all, and I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you.